And so it's now my pleasure to invite His Excellency Courtney Rattray, who's permanent mission of Jamaica to the UN, to speak to the third UN high level meeting on NCDs, the past and former president. And His Excellency has been particularly um, identified to give this presentation for the significant role which he played uh, in previous UN high level meetings. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. good morning. Let me say at the outset how grateful I am these things are a little open. How grateful I am to Sir Trevor Hassel and the HCC, the whole team for organizing this valuable event and for inviting me to contribute at this meeting. It comes, as you have heard, at a timely juncture as the region prepares for the third high-level meeting on NCDs to be held on the 27th of September. As you know and as you have heard, the Caribbean has played key roles in the previous two high-level meetings. Having co-facilitated the negotiating process in the lead-up to the UN high-level meetings in 2011 and 2014, I know how important it is for us to get our ducks in a row in terms of preparation. I must say at the outset that I am by no means an expert on the technical aspects of NCE prevention and control, but I'm happy to share my own perspectives. Allow me to begin by briefly considering the first UN high-level meeting that was held in 2011, before delving into the second high-level meeting in 2014, highlighting its outcome and the expectations it created before I turn attention to the third high-level meeting. Taking a big picture view, it is important that the process reflects continuity between the various high-level meetings and that each successive meeting builds upon the preceding high-level meetings. This is so that the international community's efforts to combat NCDs embody a coherent, overarching strategy that reflects measurable progression through the succeeding years. As such, any assessment of past high-level meetings must be based on whether the ensuing commitments made and actions taken have succeeded in identifying and addressing the gaps in each country's response to combating NCDs. In September 2011, the UN took advantage of the presence of heads of state and governments in New York for the annual opening week of the UN General Assembly to discuss how best to address the prevention and control of NCDs. Given that this was the first high-level meeting convened by the UN on NCDs, it was imperative that the political engagement be at the very highest level so as to set the benchmark for the standard of commitment expected in subsequent follow-up and review processes. The 2011 high-level meeting was focused on developmental challenges, in particular the social and economic impact of NCDs on developing countries. The developmental focus was championed by several developing countries, as despite the global attention on NCDs, Many people still believe that these were lifestyle diseases of choice. The first HLM helped to dispel this myth by demonstrating that NCDs were inextricably linked to development and the built environment, and that it required a whole of government response. It brought to the fore that vulnerable and socially disadvantaged people get sicker and die sooner than people of higher socioeconomic status. This is because they are at greater risk of being exposed to harmful products and environmental factors such as tobacco, unhealthy food, and air pollution. Poor and vulnerable people also have limited access to health services. As those of us who live in developing countries are well aware, healthcare costs for treating NCDs can quickly drain household resources thereby perpetuating the vicious cycle of poverty. 
The 2011 high-level meeting was therefore a historic moment, as the UN General Assembly recognized that addressing NCDs could also accelerate progress on the internationally agreed Millennium Development Goals. This focus on the developmental impacts of NCDs was welcomed by CARICOM countries, as we were early advocates for addressing health as a developmental issue, which was first proposed by the 27 2007 Port of Spain Declaration. This political declaration was specifically referenced in the UN resolution that mandated the, competing, the convening of the first high-level meeting. The 2011 HLM high-level meeting concluded that NCDs was a challenge of epidemic proportions that presented a range of socio-economic and developmental problems. It underscored commitments to reducing NCD risk factors while calling for the strengthening of national policies and health systems. It also highlighted the need for increased levels of international cooperation with a focus on research and development, technical assistance and capacity building. In recognition of the monumental challenges posed by NCDs, the first high level meeting highlighted the need for multi-stakeholder and multi-sectoral engagement including through partnership with civil society while adopting a whole-of-government approach. The strong emphasis on the need for multi-sectoral approaches was reflected in the only time-bound commitment that was made at that meeting, which was to promote and strengthen multi-sectoral national policies and plans for the prevention and control of NCDs by 2013. Unlike the 2011 high-level meeting, the second high-level meeting held in July 2014, which, as I said, I co-facilitated together with the Ambassador of Belgium, that meeting did not capture the highest levels of governmental representation. In 2011, 15 heads of state and 8 heads of government participated. By contrast, in 2014, no heads of state or government participated, with the highest level of representation being at ministerial rank. This was undoubtedly due to the fact that the second meeting was held in July, as opposed to in September, when world leaders made their annual visit to New York for the opening of the new session of the General Assembly. It was therefore significant that last month, we succeeded in gaining agreement that the 2018 high-level meeting will be held during the UN's high-level week in September. This will ensure that the highest level of political participation and advocacy is brought to bear on this important issue. The meeting will also provide an opportunity for civil society organizations and NGOs to engage in the process. I hope that NGOs such as HCC will mobilize to ensure that the Caribbean region makes a strong showing centered around the coherent and unified message. We should not lose sight of the fact that it is our own heads of state and government who launched this entire process in 2011. It is essential, therefore, that CARICOM member states maintain our leadership role in this process. This can best be accomplished by adhering to the commitments we have made and by renewing our political will in this regard. The second meeting was focused on assessing progress relative to the commitments that were made in 2011. It resulted in a call to enhance action in those areas that had seen least progress, which were the development of multi-stakeholder and national multi-sectoral responses for the prevention and control of NCDs. Some of the key successes that emerged from that meeting included the development by the WHO of nine voluntary targets for achievement by 2025 accompanied by a set of 25 indicators. An updated WHO Global Action Plan for the Prevention and Control of NCDs for the period 2013 to 2020, and an increase in the percentage of countries with operational national NCD policies in, and implementation budgets, which moved from 32% in September 2011 to 50% in 2014. However, notwithstanding this progress, it was also noted that national commitments had not been translated into action, particularly in the establishment of multi-sectoral policies and the implementation of affordable 
interventions. To this end, governments reaffirmed their commitment to addressing NCDs as a matter of priority through multi-sectoral action. They introduced four time-bound commitments for advancing this goal. Firstly, by, 2020, by 2015, consider setting national targets and process indicators for 2025, taking into account the WHO's nine voluntary global targets. Secondly, by 2015, consider developing or strengthening national multi-sectoral policies and plans to achieve the national targets by 2025. Thirdly, by 2016, reduce the risk factors for NCDs. And you saw answer on this graph, a whole lot of red when it comes to our region and our sub-region. Fourthly, by 2016, and as appropriate, strengthen and, and orient health systems to address the prevention and control of NCDs and underlying social determinants through people-centered primary health care and universal health coverage throughout the life cycle. The central question we are now asking ourselves in relation to our commitments and implementation targets is, are we there yet? And unfortunately, the answer is no. We are still en route. Will member states in 2018 undertake yet another stock-taking exercise? And that answer is most definitely we will. The WHO, in preparing its contribution to the third high-level meeting, developed 10 progress indicators based on the four time-bound national commitments that I have mentioned. The objective is to assess how much progress UN member states have made in meeting their commitments. The results of their work thus far show the following. Between 2015 and 2017, there was a 58% increase in the number of member states that have set national targets to address NCDs. This has moved the number of countries from 59 to 93. There has been a 48% increase in the number of member states that have established operational multi-sectoral strategies to address NCDs, moving from 64 to 94 countries. There has also been an 80% increase in the number of countries that have developed guidelines for managing the four major NCDs, which has moved from 50 to 90 states. Notwithstanding this progress, as of last year, 138 countries had shown very poor or no progress towards implementing their time-bound commitments. This does not over well for the stock-taking meeting that will be held in approximately five months. My understanding is that the tentative date for the interactive hearing with civil society in advance of the high-level meeting is the 5th of July. 2018. The intention is to ensure that countries benefit from the knowledge and expertise of those working at the community-based level. The interactive hearing with civil society has been a feature of the past two high-level meetings, and the research presented and advocacy undertaken during this forum has proved to be of significant strategic value to member states. Their insights and perspectives will keep us member states focused on the production of a practical, realistic, and implementable outcome document. The theme selected for the 2018 meeting is similar to that of the 2014 meeting, namely scaling of multi scaling of multi-stakeholder and multi-sectoral responses for the prevention and control of NCDs. However, on this occasion, the discussions will be squarely placed in that context in the context of the adoption of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its package of 17 Sustainable Development Goals. It will be important for developing countries to continue to shine the spotlight on addressing NCDs as a development issue, particularly given that the number of premature deaths continue to rise disproportionately in low-income and lower-middle-income countries, which account for 47% of premature deaths from NCDs. This statistic is even more dialed in the Caribbean context, where NCDs are the predominant health problem and cause substantially more deaths and disability than infectious diseases. Not only are mortality rates high, but Caribbean countries have approximately twice the rate of premature deaths compared to other countries. So as you can see, much work remains to be done 
including in strengthening health systems, mobilizing financing, providing universal health coverage, engaging government, civil society, and the private sector, and promoting multi-sector partnerships. In terms of the way forward, the 2011 outcome document recognized that prevention must be the cornerstone of the global response for NCDs. While this is most certainly the first line of defense, governments and partners are compelled to exert maximum effort in addressing NCDs through bolstering health systems, securing predictable and adequate financing, leveraging partnerships, managing industry interference, and taking advantage of the legislative and regulatory tools at their disposal. Naturally, all policies need to be translated into effective implementation the lead up to the meeting. I'm pleased to see innovative regional initiatives being taken, including at a recent PAHO FAO Caribbean Court of Justice high-level meeting on NCDs and the law that was held in Port of Spain. A key point that emerged was that the Treaty of that the revised Treaty of Chagarounds already contains sufficient provisions to support the adoption of CARICOM community law to regulate NCD risk factors. There is a vital need to explore new ways of addressing the critical gap in financing national NCD responses. This is a priority discussion for our region and is expected to be a key source of disagreement between developed and developing countries during the meeting. Despite relatively modest financing requirements and the cost effectiveness of interventions, governments are challenged to mobilize sufficient funding to finance national programs, whether from scarce domestic resources or in inadequate international development financing. From preliminary soundings thus far, developed countries are keen to highlight innovative financing mechanisms and domestic resource mobilization as solutions to the financing gap. They are unsympathetic to the insufficiency of overseas development assistance and the graduation from concessional financing windows that affect most of us as middle income countries. In closing, let me encourage member states and all stakeholders to remain engaged in the preparatory process leading up to the third high level meeting. A key event is the 71st World Health Assembly to be held next month in Geneva, as decisions will be taken regarding NCDs at that venue. As far as the UN negotiations on the outcome document of the high level meeting is concerned, these are expected to begin in June or July. The negotiations are expected to be challenging, and our negotiation the experts in New York will require the full support from their capitals and civil society partners to ensure that priorities on investment in health, the development dimension, research and development, strengthening health systems, achieving universal health cover coverage, and innovative financing mechanisms are all included in the text. CARICOM delegations would benefit immensely from the presence of technical expertise to support our negotiators in New York. There are some countries like Japan and Switzerland that have dedicated health experts permanently as part of their delegations. In the last two meetings, we had the benefit of having health expertise from the region support our negotiators as we are not a technical people. Dr. Karen Seeley from Trinidad and Tobago is in the room. She provided that for us on one occasion in 2014. And before that, Dr. Joyce and John from Barbados also played that role. We are hoping to be able to get financing support, um, technical expertise to come to New York for the duration of the negotiations to support our delegations as they conduct the business on your behalf. Thank you very much.